I'm walking in a lodgepole pine forest. The trunks are, are very vertical and bare until the top where it's, uh, the pine is, is growing. The forest floor is pine needles, brown, dry, a um, few bushes, and up and up the hill, and then onto the level where the school is. This is a story about secrets, things that never came up. My dad was a ballet dancer, and for nearly 45 years, almost no one in the world knew that he was. One summer, on my way to a residency at the Bev Center for the Arts in the Rocky Mountains, my dad told me he'd been there too, as an artist, in 1973. What? Yeah. He took a deep breath and said he had been a ballet dancer. He told me that was the last place he danced. What? I went straight to the archive, and we poured through photos looking for him. It was the year 1973, and he would have been 23. And then he told me about the man. Why didn't he tell me this years ago when I came out? Is that why he acted like that? Hi, Jamie. So, um, great news. I yeah. got a ton of photos um, from the archive of Banff. I just sent you an email with some of the photos. I think I found a picture of you. Oh. It's so oh, cool. You're kidding. You're kidding. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, I'll have a look. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do it right away. Hi, Jamie. Uh, it's Dad. I looked at those photos. Um, unfortunately, uh, I can't see myself in them. Uh, I remember watching a dancer named Evelyn Hart, and it was stunning. Can you uh, look her up uh, on uh, YouTube if you can? You will. You'll be absolutely amazed. I I do recognize several of the uh, other dancers. Uh, we were dancing all through the summer together, so. Um, faces are familiar, but uh, I'm not in those photos. Hi, please leave a message and I'll call you back. Hey, Dad. It's Jamie Cohn. Call me back when you got a moment. Was he telling me the truth? Christy Pitts Park, there's the laundry building, the gay boys, the lady that's lived here for 65 years. And there's the bedroom where Jamie was born. Gracious. Oh. Oh. I loved my dad very much when I was young. He told us a lot of his childhood stories. He told us about the farm. He told us about living in Mexico when he was young. And there were stories about the girlfriends, hitchhiking, about California in the 70s. Even the commune he split from after they tried to hide a body. But he never spoke about the ballet. And he had never spoken about the man. Bye, 
himself, just holding on a little bit. Hang on. Hang on. Three months old. Good lad. Oh, and the beautiful lady from the medieval times. And tell me about your uh, clothes. Oh, um, that's my crinoline. Oh, I've got it on the film, yes. And um, this is my um, uh, apron that goes over it. Take lovely gliding steps. That's how the ladies did in those days. Very graceful. Looking back, I'm not sure anybody really ever thought I was straight. I loved my silk bathrobes. I loved putting napkins and towels on my head like long hair. I loved my dolls. And I was a happy kid. Until I wasn't. Hey, Jamie. What you wearing that uh, lovely uh, robe for? What's the matter? Camera got your tongue? Uh, Camera got your tongue? Uh, <laughs> so why are you wearing that lovely uh, robe? Uh, uh, Don't get following on that thing. Uh, at 16, he told me I was too young to know about my sexuality. That the kids at school must have convinced me it was cool to say I was gay. We basically drifted apart. God is dead, God is dead, God, God is dead. God. And God is dead, God is dead, God is dead, God is dead. Material for creations and text cement. And others. Let's bring out here. Oh, a nice old moth with a dragonfly, a little wee dragonfly. Shells for uh, June bugs. Cicada. It was circular. And uh, they would have to go out with a boat boy who might have been a son or a young boy whose job it was to run to the other side of the pond and grab the boat before it smacked into the concrete wall of the pond at the end. There we go, perfect. It surprised me, and I had a surprise of my own for him. Evelyn Hart is one of the most accomplished ballet dancers in the world. We became fast friends. She told me about that piece, the duet my dad remembered her dancing, the steps that launched her career into the stratosphere of world ballet. She said it will always live in her, just beneath the skin. She closed her eyes and began to move her hands as if they were the two dancers' bodies. Would you show me? And she did.
one has to recognize that not everyone can be an artist. Everyone can be artistic in their approach to life, but not everyone can make their living by being an artist. That's all I set out to do when I started dancing at 17, was I wanted to be an expressive artist, to be able to allow people to feel what I feel when I hear music. When I saw the trees move and I see the water and I see the patterns and the beauty of the earth and the sense of, of how spirit moves through us to be alive, that's enough. You're called. And that's the hard part, is when that calling seems to be finished. When you don't feel that call, you kind of feel a little lost. You know, there's a lot of uh, difficult aspects of it, about being a dancer, and a lot of painful aspects, a lot of criticism. You're putting yourself out there, people, you, you have to deal with a lot of competition. It's not about making your living that way, it's about having the opportunity to be able to share that depth inside of yourself with other people. What's most important, I think, is that those people come to recognize to have the courage to be themselves, regardless of whatever that is. So, though your dad didn't go into dance, he, I can tell, even from the few minutes of talking to him, that he lived a very artistic life internally. And so though he was an accountant, he was a very decent man. That is, in the end, all that we can be is to be the best human that we can possibly be. Well, I think I know what this is. <laughs> okay, oh, it's a full... Uh... Unitard. Wow. <laughs> Jamie. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. Okay. This is uh, bringing back huge memories to just to touch and to be able to anticipate wearing it and, and oh god. <laughs> My instrument for dance was I thought a good one. I was strong, lithe, tall, and graceful. So all of those elements could have added up to maybe a little bit more dance, maybe a lot more dance. The end of summer, the review of my dancing by my primary teacher uh, was quite negative. She felt that my body didn't have promise, and that as you can imagine, was discouraging. And it uh, really took the wind out of my sails. What she impressed on me was good work ethic, positive attitude, but the wrong type of body. That comment really uh, uh, went to my heart. It really did stop my, my uh, progress dead, you know, dead in the water, to, um, towards becoming a dancer.
Hi, Jamie. Um, hey, how's it going? Not bad, not bad. As soon as he got the letter, um, he emailed back. Um, I would think about him from time to time. Um, I just kind of felt like it was, uh, uh, we were never going to cross paths again. Both of us lost contact with almost all of our circle of friends. Huh. You know, developing in different directions and doing different things. And there wasn't enough pull to, to keep the, the circle of friends together. So last night we talked for about an hour and a half. And um, we finished, it was about 11.30 our time. Uh, and I just sat for probably about 15 minutes, just uh, awash with memories and the feeling that... Uh, how good it was to reconnect with him. Oh, it's really something. And we both uh, sort of realized as we were talking that, that we meant more to each other than we realized um, because we were sort of kindred souls. Well, again, thanks for setting this up. I thought we could kind of have a just a chat, but it was really quite emotional. Did you ever think, I should tell him about once having been an artist? I guess, I guess I didn't see myself as an artist and maybe I was too self-critical. It wasn't going to be relevant um, mm -hmm. until suddenly there you were going to Banff. And of course I had a story about Banff to tell. I had, a, I had hope and the hopes were dashed and it was a failure for me and, and so I just put it aside. I did wish I had told you earlier when I saw your reaction and when I saw the power of it again. Seeing it that night in video again just brought it roaring back, all its power, all its beauty. And I could see you were affected by it. And, uh -huh. and if I could have transferred that moment to 10 years prior, I would have done it in an instant. Did you wish that you would have told me about having sex with a man when I came out? Uh, uh, no, it didn't occur to me one way or the other. You were finding your way. I felt if I didn't um, talk to you about how I felt about sex, and, and heterosexual sex was great, um, that you wouldn't have had anything from me about sex. And I was so worried that if, if you were experimenting, that you might contract AIDS and you would die. It had finally come up. We haven't always really been that close in adulthood. No. And I think no. that now that we're able to really talk about all the things, yeah. there's both dance, and you also are able to talk more frankly and openly about sexuality. Yeah. Dad. If you had told your dad, how would he have reacted? Well, I think his first reaction might have been, did you get a test? He was a doctor, of course. <laughs> so a similar reaction to yours, his first thought was disease. Yeah, well, uh, and care for, for the son. He, he, he wouldn't have wanted me to, uh, to die. What it is, I think, too, is an unwillingness to become emotionally involved, mm. a difficulty a frozenness. Mm -hmm. But I didn't tell him my story. I see you as a queer person. I see you as a dancer. Oh. I see you as an artist. Oh. I want to continue dancing until I die. <sighs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs>
As the year wore on, we were gifted things by the gentle hand of chance. David's grandfather, the patriarch, we found his writing, and he did not have good things to say about men who dance. Peace is not at all as assured as some people believe it is. Wipe out military training, and what will be the effect on our boys? We will produce a class of sissy boys. We will produce a class of fanatics and dancers, and will not produce the good old athletic boys who have made the British Empire what it is. <laughs> oh, oh, Jamie, Jamie, Jamie. For me, it was uh, not something that uh, I dis ever discussed with him. I, um, experimenting and it wouldn't have been brought up between us. I was pursuing my own path. Oh, a class of sissy boys. Oh a God. class of fanatics and dancers. I was a man of words One day I lost all my manners I thought my friends would understand Turns out friendship is a delicate art Even in dreams, even in dreams, even in dreams so I dreamt I was an actor in a play I forgot all my lines one day I thought I could still steal the stage Turns out Stories are a delicate art, even in dreams, even in dreams, even in dreams. So I dreamt I was a cowboy on the range without a rope, no lasso to my still follow turns out control is a delicate art even in dreams even in dreams even in dreams so I 
dreamt I was a man of war Who wanted blood no more So like a song I laid my armor By the river And then I slept all day Dreaming I slept away All that I regretted It turned down Forgiving yourself is a delicate art Even in dreams, even in dreams, even in dreams So I dreamt I was not in love With anything in this whole world I thought I'd feel, I'd feel so free Turns out freedom is a delicate art Even in dreams, even in dreams, even in dreams So I dreamt I was Right next to you Your hands and mine Your eyes alive I thought I could Never wake up Turns out Dreaming Is a Delicate art But I love you so And I miss you so even in dreams, oh, even in dreams.